Sports. Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Kaliski, and I'm a product manager on the QuickSight team, where I work on our generative BI features, and in particular, a piece of QuickSight called Q, which I'm excited to show you here in just a little bit. We have a ton to get through, so I'm going to dive right in. Now, before we dive into generative BI, let's back up and talk about generative AI. Now, I've been in the AI space for a few years now, and I feel like every time I go to an AI conference, I see this diagram. Now, you may be wondering, well, in this, where would generative AI fit? Um, and I would put it right here. Now, does this mean that is the be all, end all, technically exact place where generative AI should live? Absolutely not. No, generative AI could live in, I would definitely keep it mostly here, but you could see it scooting a little bit outside to the machine learning bubble. The people would maybe argue that the size should be bigger, smaller, get in a debate with someone on the internet about this. By the time you're done, you'll have a full on knowledge graph about generative AI. <laughs> now, how does Gartner define it and why do I put it here? I'm not gonna read you this definition, but feel free to read it. But the reason that I put this here is that generative AI at its core, most practical applications that we see today have deep learning neural networks at their heart. Doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, but it's the predominant way that we see it today. But what makes it different than the traditional deep learning we've been talking about for years is that it's making something new. So if we picture that we had a deep learning model that could classify art into which art is created, no matter how well we train that model, it's never going to create something that is a new art. I couldn't tell it to make art that looks like my dog by Monet, right? So that's the idea. Generative AI is making something new, not just doing a classification problem or doing clustering or anything like that, that we might have seen it. Here in the last year, AWS has done a lot of innovation on generative AI. For those that have been familiar with AWS for a little while, you probably are already familiar with Amazon SageMaker where you can go and create models. You can also create generative models here. We've also announced Amazon Code Whisper, which is an AI code generator, and Amazon Bedrock, where you can get access to the foundation models, both ones from Amazon, such as Titan, and ones that come from uh, third parties, such as the Claude model from uh, Anthropic. So these are all available here and whatever you might want to do, whether it's you want to generate images or you want to process text and create a new chat bot, let's say, there's the tools to help you do this. And this is just a set of what's available. But what do all of these three things have in common? Well, in one way or another, you are dealing with code. So what happens if code is not your strong suit. Can you still use generative AI then? Yes. So I'm going to introduce you to the product that I work on, Amazon QuickSight. This is a unified BI service, and we say at hyperscale because it has this serverless architecture that becomes available wherever and whenever you or your users are needing access to it. So what can Amazon QuickSight do? Well, a lot of different stuff. Um, I'm not going to read you this whole slide, but just let's walk through some of the things that you might be familiar with in the overall business intelligence space. Probably the thing that everyone knows BI for, dashboards. And in QuickSight, you can create these beautiful interactive dashboards. You can filter, you can zoom, you can dive in and learn more. And they're also really easy to go from development into production. You're also not limited by just the experience of the service as we provide it. Thousands of customers customize applications to fit their needs. And you can make this feel like an all-in-one experience, um, or you can just embed the pieces that you need. It's up to you. But if dashboards are not your jam, and that is not the way your organization does business, QuickSight also allows you to create paginated reports. OK, we're going to move on from QuickSight and ask ourselves, what happens when generative AI meets BI? Now, before I was a product manager, I was an analyst. 
And the thing about when I was an analyst that I that just drove me crazy the most is that it just had so many pieces that felt repetitive. I wanted to do analysis that was going to do good in the world and make a powerful impact. I did not want to spend my days clicking through a UI just to present the data. That wasn't the part that gave me that fire in my belly that was exciting me and wanting me to do more. So what I'm most excited about when it comes to bringing generative AI into the BI space is how it can make things easier. So now I'm going to walk you through an example, and I'm going to start as an analyst who's creating a new dashboard. So I already have some KPIs in this QuickSight authoring experience, but I want to build out the rest. To get started, I'm going to go click this Ask You to Build a Visual button at the top. And then all I need to do is describe in simple, natural language what data I want to see visualized. Then I can easily click to change a chart type or add analytics, such as a forecast. And really quickly, I have just made a whole visual like that. Let's see a couple more. Let's do sales by product by city. And let's also do a regional breakdown of sales by segment as everyone's favorite, a sand key. Now, each of these visuals are interactive and completely customizable the same way as if you had created them from scratch. The only difference is that you have just saved yourself a whole lot of time and tedious button clicking. Okay, now, Generative BI is not just about making dashboards faster to build. We all know that data isn't perfect. It's not clean. Even when it is clean, there can still be noise in the data. For example, it's completely possible that we could have a data set. This is sales examples here. So maybe we have a payment method that's PayPal, but maybe we also have a customer that is PayPal. That data is clean, but we still need to organize it. So what can we do when we need to do that? Well, one, we could push data further up the pipeline and say, hey, data engineering folks, clean this up for us. But realistically, we don't usually get that luxury. So I'm gonna show you a way that Generative BI can be used to help clean up data and get it into the shape that we need it to be so that it can be analysis ready. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here to the create calculated fields. And just like before, all I do is describe what I want to do. So this is gonna be a month over month free trial percent change by date. This is gonna track the delta of the change over time so I can chart that instead of just seeing the raw numbers or just a point in time month over month. Once I have this, you can see it's already put in the comments for me that it's AI generated, which can help if I'm sharing. I still have full control to go in and do manual manipulations to this, or I can decide I'm good. Once I save this, I can use it. It's already added. So let's combine order date and that calculated field we just created. Now, if I wanna spiff this up, I can use the generative editor. Here, all I need to do is describe the changes I wanna see. So let's change date granularity to month, add color by region, and change the chart type to a vertical stacked bar. And look at that. It is so exciting to me because that first chart was a little underwhelming. People wouldn't know the key takeaway. And now it is so clear and crisp. And it took me, what, one click to get into the generative editor? And then I just described it. It's awesome. So now we can say that this dashboard is ready to publish. We might want to change the layout so it's not so four square like, um, but that's fine. Those are simple things. But what about the end business user that we would want to share this dashboard with? So let's imagine we can see all the pieces we just created here, just laid out in a nice um, slick way for our end business users. Let's put on a different hat. Now let's imagine we are that end business user, the person who's using this dashboard to make decisions. How can Generative BI help them? Well, when we create these dashboards, we do want people to get information at a glance, but more importantly, we want them to be able to make decisions, to be able to help have a positive impact in the organization. And the way that we do that as humans most often is through storytelling. 
But what can be really challenging is how you go from a dashboard of numbers and data into a compelling story. Well, with Generative BI, we've added a new feature just for that. It's called Stories. So here in the top right, I'm going to go click to create a story. I'll pick the format that I want. So I'm going to do a scrollable page here. And then I just describe what my story is about. So how about we have how we can increase the conversion of free trial customers into paying accounts so we can boost sales. I'll set my theme and build. And in seconds, my story is ready. It has multiple sections full of AI generated text combined with relevant visuals from my dashboard. It restyles them to fit the theme of the story and it's customizable. So this section on bundling features, there's no visual. I can easily go click to add one. It also has a generative editor, but unlike we saw before, this time the generative editor is manipulating text. So we see this next step section. We can easily change that from a paragraph into bullets. And this isn't just breaking the bullets up um, by sentence structure. It's actually re-summarizing it using generative models. And with that, we're ready to share this across the organization to help people inform better decisions. It's a really exciting time because even if you only use this to help yourself get over that blank page paralysis that happens when you move from quantitative to qualitative, it's an extremely powerful tool. And if you maybe are someone who's not the best with words, you have now words at your fingertips. And if you are someone who's great with words, then you have the ability to customize every single thing you see to give it your voice, your spin, your flavor. It's up to you. Okay, so everything that I just showed you, those are things that we're going to have available to you later this year. But I want to show you one more thing that's available for you to use right now. It's near and dear to my heart. It's called QuickSight Q. Now, Q enables anyone to ask questions about your data and get an answer back with in the form of a relevant visual. Ways that we see people use Q today. We see people looking up facts. Sure, your dashboard has your year-to-date sales, but maybe you want to know, well, what were they last month? We see people wanting to drill down. Maybe you have sales by product, but maybe you want to know the product breakdown in a particular region. You can do that. Or maybe you want to do some lightweight analytics. And this could be something as simple as understanding who were your top sales performers last month, or something as big as why did sales change last quarter? Where on the fly, behind the scenes, Q can analyze your data and do a full contribution analysis for you. So it does all of these things where you as the end business user get to drive it using the data that's behind the dashboard, but maybe those individual visuals haven't yet been added or created. As a business analyst, this lets you create nice streamlined dashboards without having to compromise what people want to find. So everybody, even if they have a different use case, can come and find what they need. So let's take a look. First, we'll start with a forecast question. So maybe we just want to forecast sales for the next 12 months. You just type that in and there you go. Q generates the visual. Now, we see that in the beginning of the forecast, there's this large drop. And like we would expect, the seasonality of the data it's reflected in the past. So let's ask what caused that in the previous year. Why did sales drop in January 2022? And here is that contribution analysis. Q gives you up to four different key drivers. It'll tell you the field. It'll tell you which specific value in that field contributed the most and how much it contributed. This is going to play on a loop, so we're going to move back through to summarize what we've seen today. So when generative BI means AI, we've seen that you now have the ability to do some AI powered dashboard authoring, whether that is just creating visuals in natural language, changing them with natural language or creating calculations the same exact way. You can have the ability to tell data stories where you can just give it a prompt and it will give you the information that you're after. And lastly, we saw something available for you right now today, 
quick site queue where you can do analytics or just give people access to the data that's behind the scenes so that they are able to answer their own questions without getting into a data queue, without spinning off yet another dashboard or another filter request. They can get what they need in that moment when they need to know. And that was a look, a very quick look at some of the generative BI features that we have in store and available today. And uh, I look forward to your questions, so bring them on. Thank you. Mm -hmm.